can you guess what we're doing today? <laughs> Impossible. Things are happening every day. Let's talk about the 1997 Cinderella reunion. Hello, oh, a butterfly. Lovely. Hello, darlings, and welcome to Take Care, Darling. It's me, Care Darling, your modern day fairy godmother. And like I said, we're talking about the Cinderella reunion. Now, I don't know about you, but I am heavily impacted by the production that Whitney Houston has produced. When I think of this musical, I think of something old, something new, something borrowed, and something blue. Meaning something old, which is the tale of Cinderella. It's been going on for centuries. New as in this production took a totally different take that we didn't see coming, but it was totally needed. Something borrowed, which is Roger and Hammerstein's music, and something blue, which is Cinderella's dress. And I will get to the point of why her being in blue was so important to them. Here are things I noticed and wanted to bring it up, which was when they were talking about it, they didn't bring up uh, the passing of Whitney Houston and also Natalie Dessel. Now, Natalie Dessel played the part of Minerva, one of the stepsisters. I guess they didn't want to harp on their passing and they wanted to celebrate what they were able to create within the show and how it still impacts this world. Let's go ahead and celebrate her and Natalie by talking about Cinderella. I feel like I've kind of already knew this already was that Brandy was living her Cinderella dream. Brandy's life was actually turning into a real Cinderella story. In fact, Whitney's been like a fairy godmother to Brandy ever since they met. Brandy had been a longtime fan of Whitney's, and it was the superstar who inspired her when she was just a little girl in Macomb, Mississippi. I want you to be Cinderella. And I started screaming, I ran, ran around the house, I told my mom, I said, Mom, Whitney wants me to be. She said it under one condition that I was her very godmother. It kind of bled into their performance, and her favorite thing about being Cinderella wasn't you know, oh, the show, she said the best moment for her was being in the studio for Whitney. Oh, can I just say, it makes so much sense. Even their voices, like gorgeous. Just Brandy has that innocence, airy, raspy R&B soul. And Whitney, whoo, Whitney is a powerhouse. It makes sense to me to hear a fairy godmother be a bit more assertive and powerful, but not just powerful, but empowering. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it because you don't even have to watch it. You can listen to them and it's electric. Impossible, impossible. 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 So here are things that I didn't know that they brought up in the reunion. First thing, it was really hard for them to find a prince. It's like the Cinderella story in reverse where it's like the search for finding the prince and they kept looking and then Paolo comes in and he apparently was late. He was the last person they saw in casting on the last day and he came in because he was, I believe, in the chorus for The King and I on Broadway and he was late and he's like, I'm sorry. And then he sings. Oh my, how do you, how do you explain a voice? Okay, I'm gonna try and do my best. His voice is just so true and honest. And so again, hearing her you know, gorgeous raspiness to something like the tone of it. Are you really as wonderful as you seem? Tone of it. Oh, oh, gorgeous. Just gorgeous. And so is he. So is he. Another thing was they knew right away that they wanted the queen to be Whoopi Goldberg. And Whoopi Goldberg was, <laughs> she was like, well, if I'm the queen, I'm going to have to need some jewelry. I didn't even know this. By the way, you like my bling? <laughs> yeah. The difference about this and Whoopi's was this is from Amazon, and when Whoopi was wearing her jewelry, there were bodyguards around her in case anyone gets too close to her or if she accidentally leaves. It makes me think of um, how to lose a guy in 10 days. You know what I'm talking about? When she starts leaving and the bodyguard's like, ma'am, your necklace. <laughs> I knew Cinderella was a big deal, but I didn't realize there was 60 million 
viewers watching it. That's crazy. And and something else to understand was when Whitney said that she wanted to produce Cinderella, there was a lot of no's because they did not want a black princess this is a flop this isn't going to work and then yet 60 million viewers are watching it and to this day we still talk about it speaking of a black cinderella yes brandy all of a sudden is the first black cinderella this is 1997 and something else to, to think that this is crazy the first black cinderella on broadway was kiki palmer yeah guess what year 2013 the last thing I learned through the reunion was that when they showed the feet in the glass slippers, uh, Brandy says, yeah, that's not my feet. <laughs> Apparently she's a size nine and she goes, yeah, if you see a size nine on TV, it looks huge. Oh, oh, wait, 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 this is important. So remember I said something blue and it's Cinderella's dress. This is what I didn't know was the costume designer said she has to wear blue. Definitely, because of Disney Cinderella. A lot of people vision Cinderella as white, blue-eyed, blonde, in a blue dress. So here comes Brandy, and here she is, and they said she is wearing braids. She is who she is, and the dress isn't what makes the princess. It's the person. So that was something I was like, oh, I didn't even think about that. So let's get into why is Cinderella so important to us? This is something not just, oh wow, it's important at the end. This is something I want to show my future children and hopefully they will continue sharing this um, timeless musical. And the first thing I think is kind of obvious, but it's the diversity. The term rainbow casting, I believe, came from this production. Did rainbow casting exist before? Yes, but I don't think to the media in such a way. Now, when they came into it, as far as casting, they said, we want to make it diverse. It doesn't matter what color their skin is or what culture they come from. We want to choose the best person for this role but it was a shock to people to see a princess be black a fairy godmother be black a queen be black and also side note so disney when they announced that they were doing a cartoon based in africa a lot of people were excited to see themselves to see the culture and they're like finally we're because they said there would be kings and queens they're like finally we're going to um, get something that establishes seeing themselves in a positive way versus what the media has shown. Oh, it's going to be with lions. What the heck? Like we couldn't even like not one Disney, just not one. Okay. And rainbow casting or diverse casting, you probably have seen it in today's work. When you think of Hamilton, for example, it's about the story and the talent. Bridgerton is also known for having a rainbow cast and, and stuff and holy moly, can we just talk about the guys in Bridgerton? So the second thing that was important about this is because of the diversity, it kind of opened up seeing biracial couples, for example, the, the king and queen and seeing Cinderella and the prince. The only thing I batted an eye to was the fact where I'm like, I'm confused. Queen plus king equals prince. But then you kind of get over it because you just want to be focused in the stories. Now, the biggest thing of why this Cinderella is so important to us, and I think it's in a way said or sung really in Whitney Houston's The Magic in You. I think the, the greatest takeaway from this is that you can see yourself within Cinderella. It's about starting in a place of being hopeful and kind and continuing to do good in the world and then believing in yourself, believing in the magic in you, things happen for you or you're able to get that happily ever after. Now listen, maybe you don't see yourself as Cinderella. Maybe you see yourself as the fairy godmother. Because of that, Billy Porter, who is in the reunion, talks about himself being the fairy godmother because why not? Why can't you see yourself as being something greater? So ultimately, I think that's the importance of what they did in the production of Cinderella in 1997, is that you can absolutely be the princess, the queen, the fairy godmother, or the mean stepmother. Wait a minute, I can't believe I didn't even talk about Bernadette Peters. I think the greatest choice was to have Bernadette Peters be the stepmother. I bet you can lie at me whatever you do. 
Try not to snort. Sacrifice for me! Mother, you're hurting me! Remember, girls, we hide our flaws until, until after the, the wedding. wedding. Yeah, I can't believe I almost went through all of this and didn't even talk about Bernadette Peters. I went to a concert recently with Bernadette Peters. Can we play a clip from it? Can you believe she's like 74? That is nuts. And she's like hotter than me. Mm, work. There we go. You could be a princess. You could be a fair godmother queen and a hot 74 year old. I name it. I claim it. I love it. Well, darlings, that's it for today's episode. Let me know what's your favorite thing about the 1997 Cinderella. Oh, by the way, <laughs> I forgot where I was for a second. Subscribe, like, and if you're like, I wonder what I wonder what Care's up to. I'm on TikTok and Instagram. Uh, care off book. So until next time, take care, darling.